Hello everyone and welcome to the lectures for astronomy and cosmology which is the last topic of A2. So this was something which was uh, really a lot in demand by you guys. So by popular request here it is. So I personally have a lot of love for this topic and not this uh, not just this topic but also this entire field of uh, study as a whole uh, where we analyze uh, all sorts of celestial bodies and planets black holes all of that sort of stuff because at the end of the day and I'm sorry if I'm going off at a tangent here it just goes on to show how insignificant we are in the grand scheme of things so uh, we say that humans are at the center of everything and my answer to that is how can humans be at the center of everything when we aren't even at the center of our own galaxy, right? So we'll be getting to that sort of a debate in a minute. But before that, I wanted to show you guys something and that will help you build an appreciation of what uh, we are studying and also why are we studying uh, this thing here. So this right here is a cool app called Stellarium, uh, uh, S-T-L-L-A-R-I-U-M. So not the only app of this type out here, uh, but there are a lot of other apps. Uh, this one probably seemed like the easiest one to use for me out of uh, some two or three that I tried. So uh, let's try to first play around with this. So as you can see, there are some options which you can play with here. You can have the grids or lines appear in terms of the uh, longitude and latitude. Uh, let's have the atmosphere uh, first go away so this is according to some location in the US and this is how the stars would appear right so I've turned uh, turned off the atmosphere it's currently daytime uh, in that part so I have turned off the atmosphere so everything seems like night and ad additionally I can also turn off the landscape so I can look at all the celestial bodies uh, without having to worry about where the grass pops up so uh, this is uh, some part of our solar system that we can see here. So this is all of our, uh, so all that we know about our universe at this moment in time, whenever this video is being recorded, uh, whenever you are seeing this, so that uh, information, this information is uh, relevant according to that time. So obviously we can see that in our solar system, in our galaxy, we have a lot of uh, bodies. We have stars, we have planets, and we have many other things of the sort. So for example, if I open up a familiar planet to us, for example, something like Jupiter right here. So for Jupiter, I have uh, some information and then I also have some other distances written here. So I can see that this magnitude is basically its brightness of sorts, distance. So this is the distance from the Earth, how far this thing is from the Earth. There's something called phase and there is also the diameter, right? So the problem here is this or not a problem or uh, let's call it a question that I want to pose to you guys, which is how do you figure that we ever, how did we come up with these numbers? How did we find how bright or how visible you can say such a planet is and not just Jupiter, but any star or any body for that matter? How did we calculate its distance? How did we calculate its diameter or its radius? So how do we come up with things like that? And that is what we are going to study in this unit here, right? So all these questions and uh, perhaps not all of these, but most of these will be answered in this unit, right? So Jupiter is a planet. In contrast to the planet, the sun is a star, right? So the only difference between a planet and a star, as you might have also guessed, but let me just put it in uh, technical terms, is this, that a star produces its own light. Right, it produces its own energy. The Earth as a planet does not have its own source of light, but Sun as a star produces its energy. And in the previous units, uh, particularly nuclear reactions, we know that this energy is produced by nuclear fusion in the core of the Earth. 
right so the earth also produces a lot of energy which is essential to life at earth life on earth and uh, most of this energy is in light ultraviolet and in the form of infrared radiation right so if you just go ahead on to some other stars so you can also see that on this app you have some shapes popping up and then you can see these uh, mystical creatures of sort so these are called constellations right so you see some co uh, constellations some so this one is called Aquarius you have Capricornus uh, and other uh, constellations as well right and uh, some of these resemble some sorts of uh, shapes from uh, mythology and legend so what I want to show you guys here is this so for example if I also talk about another star so Alpha Centauri right so this is another sort of a star this is some star system and <coughs> as you can see here you have the real-time data for its altitude uh, for its altitude and how it's changing we have its magnitude as well again the magnitude is just a fancy name for its brightness as seen from the earth and we have its distance from the earth as well so how did we actually come up with these values is uh, something we'll be investigating the answer to in uh, in this uh, unit of ours right so you have other stars as well this is another star so there are a lot of different types of stars which will obviously be out of the scope of the syllabus so you also have some star systems uh, how are those set up so sometimes you have stars which form a small system of their own so there can be three or two stars usually is uh, what we see in the system in the universe around us right so these are some other uh, constellations this star is also uh, like a really really powerful star this is called Betelgeuse or Betelgeuse something of uh, something of this sort so this one uh, even though its magnitude its apparent brightness so for example if you're looking at this from the earth on a really clear night so this would only appear 0.5 uh, times as bright but this is a really really powerful star right and this is also a huge star so if you really if you are interested in this sort of thing so you might know that the Sun even though it's really large as uh, compared to the earth this is uh, in the grand scheme of things it's called a medium-sized star so this is actually called so Betelgeuse is really called a giant star right so in terms of its mass this is really huge so Betelgeuse is a very very big star in size and it is also the tenth brightest star in the night sky and so this is in the constellation of Orion so uh, there's a lot of debate about Betelgeuse as well so people say that it's going to explode in sort of a supernova but nothing to worry about for us uh, it will be cool to uh, look up in the sky and see this explosion but it's really very very far away to actually have uh, any sort of damage or impact on earth as well but again uh, scientists are proved uh, wrong time and again so maybe who knows let's see so you have other things like this you have Mars you have other star constellations which are shown right so the question that we have to answer which will be which we'll be looking at in the lectures to follow is how do we actually calculate these interstellar distances how do we estimate the radius of stars and also we know the temperature of some stars uh, temperature of some planets so how do we estimate that as well right so the answers to all of these questions we'll be looking at in the upcoming series of lectures so see you there